run it? Well, there's only one person other than myself that has seen me run it, if you haven't seen me practice it earlier today. So, you know, anyway, uh, ready? Okay, in three, two, one, go. So yeah, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We went from 2D Zelda earlier with uh, Link to the Past to 3D Zelda, that is Breath of the Wild, with the most recent installment. Um, we're only going to be doing the Great Plateau, and the main reason for that is that I'm very inconsistent at getting to Ganon as well as defeating the Blights, because that's hard. And, you know, I haven't learned that much, but I kind of did want to showcase it, because otherwise I'm going to have to wait to October at least. Uh, I'm going to be learning all dungeons, and I hope to showcase that at BSG October, so... You know, future plans and all that. Uh, we start with a bit of a cutscene that we cannot actually skip the first about minute and 15 seconds of. After that, we'll be skipping it entirely. Uh, there's only a handful of cutscenes at the start that we can't skip, the rest we can. Um, I'll be skipping uh, all cutscenes except the last three, which uh, you guys have generously donated for. That's about seven minutes and 15 seconds worth of cutscenes, uh, which you're going to see right at the end. Okay. The way we. Skip the cutscenes is pretty easy. I'm just going to mess mash X and plus, and Open as soon as they become skippable, that allows me to skip it right there. We're going to sprint all the way here and get ourselves the Sheikah Slate. This is kind of our, our tool that we have for just about everything. Uh, it'll, it shows us the map, it shows us abilities that we have. That uh, it it kind of just guides us through the entire Take game. It. It will help guide you after your long slumber. Now, for those that haven't played Breath of the Wild and still want to play it, I will say right away, uh, there won't be a whole lot of spoilers. What I'm playing is basically the first 20 minutes of the Any% percent run, which is about the first half, uh, which is about like the first hour or two casually, probably. So there shouldn't be too many spoilers. And even then, I'm going to just rush through the first four shrines of the game. Everything past that is going to be the same. Uh, I'm also going to use the first glitch here. This is called Whistle Sprinting. Uh, whistle Sprinting is when I uh, go at almost running speed. It's slightly slower than sprinting, um, but without actually using any stamina by sprinting, or rather whistling and mashing the sprint button at the same time. The only downside is of this is that I basically have to control the camera uh, and, the, and I need to mash with the, the sprint button at the same time as well as hold the direction button with my index finger and use the whistle with my thumb. So I'm basically doing four buttons that I used to have to use at the same time, two of which are joysticks. So it's it's really awkward, you but loved. you kind of get used to it after a little bit. That must shine upon Hyrule once again. So now we're going to come on yeah, to the one major cutscene that we or major, the one cutscene that we cannot skip as we get out of the Shrine of Resurrection where Link has waken up, woken up after a hundred years being in, uh, or being asleep, pretty much. So yeah, here we go, and we sprint into this last part, and that gets us to show the grand map that is Breath of the Wild. This cutscene still gives me goosebumps. It's, I, I really, I actually kind of like that we cannot skip this, uh, even though, you know, it, it is a cutscene in a, in a speedrun and all that, but still. So yeah, we're only going to be doing the Great Plateau today, uh, which is up to the point that you get the paraglider. The time will be when we get the paraglider uh, after completing the four shrines that we need to do in order to get that. Now uh, The game kind of tells us where to go with the old man, but we're going to be skipping him. Uh, now, I could rush forward to get myself a, uh, a beetle, but uh, because this is uh, because this isn't the full any percent run, I don't actually need it. We would normally get it to get a strength potion for Ganon, uh, but that's not actually necessary here. So I'm just going to get myself uh, the Hyrule uh, or Helian Mushroom or whatever it's called. The Mushroom is just for healing items and for safety later on. I pick up two additional ones from what I would actually need over the course of this run. Uh, or one extra herb, however you want to call it. That's just for safety items for later on. There are a few points where it's very easy to die, so... So we go over here and we sprint into this little cutscene trigger over here where we hear Zelda uh, call for us. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. She's going to point us towards the, uh, the next place we need to go, the first of the towers, the Great Plateau Tower. We're going to do just that. 
We get this herb. Again, just a safety item. Now, on the way here, I could pick up just about five different arrows, which in any percent I'd be picking up. Uh, but since we're never actually going to be using the bow, I'm going to just skip that and head straight for the Bokoblin on the left here. Reason we want to head towards him is because I want to steal his shield from him. And what we're going to do is we're going to dash to him, do a running attack, and I'm going to pick up that Boko shield. The Boko shield will allow us to do a lot of cool stuff later on. Uh, we, we're not actually even going to see that many things, but it allows me to skip over a few gaps, which just saves a decent amount of time all in all. So here, only part of the cutscene again skippable. We're going to get to the first tower. Uh, once we trigger this, we kind of get a cutscene where you see all of the towers in around Hyrule rise, but we're going to skip that. Because again, skippable cutscenes, got to save that time right there. And there we go. We're going to see uh, us getting the information of the Great Plateau, basically like the map of the Great Plateau on our Shiga Slade. Basically with every tower you get like a piece of the map. Uh, there is actually also a category which is just about map completion, just getting all to all the, all the towers across Hyrule as fast as possible. It's a pretty, pretty interesting little run. It's a, it's a, it's a category extension, but it still works. We're also coming up on the first major glitch of the run, which is fall cancelling. Um, we're going to do that in a moment. First, we're going to skip another cutscene right here, where we see the old man uh, flying towards us. So I'm going to try to get this first try. So I'm going to try to jump off this tower. Now, you can imagine that's kind of dangerous, you know, jumping off of towers like that. And there we go. We didn't die. Basically, what I did there is I fell off while throwing my axe. And at just before I hit land, I threw the axe and then immediately unequipped my shield. And because of that, uh, the game uh, takes your height as if it was the height that you got as soon as you started unequipping the shield, which is not very high anymore. So it basically, because of that, I take no damage whatsoever as I fall uh, off the tower. We're going to do that twice during this run. Hmm. <laughs> so here we're going to say, the, or we're going to go with the first option, and then the first, and the second, and the first, just to get the shortest amount of dialogue options. Oh. He tells us uh, about the paraglider and about uh, how we'd be easily be able to get to uh, Hyrule Castle with that. But we're going to have to do something for him in order to get it, which he's uh, going to show me about a treasure and a shrine. Uh, we don't really care, though. We're just going to run right there anyway. Uh, going to re-equip the shield because I do need that again in a moment. And around here. It's actually faster to walk around the lake than it is to swim through it. So we're going to just do that. Again, I'm controlling four buttons at the same time, or two joysticks and two buttons at the same time in order to just try and get to the shrine as fast as possible. Now, in terms of route, there's actually two different routes that you can do here. You can either go for the Magnesis, then Cryonis, then Stasis, then Bombs, or you can do um, Magnesis, then Bombs, then Cryonis, then... Uh, Stasis. Uh, the latter is about 30 seconds slower, but it's significantly easier in execution. Uh, so I'm still going with that specific route just because of marathon safety and because I'm not entirely consistent at the other route. Uh, for reference, 30 seconds is about one major mistake. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not really worth it to go for the harder route unless you can actually do it flawlessly, because as soon as you make one major mistake, it's equal again in terms of time. So yeah, we get the first of our abilities, which is Magnesis, which allows me... Well, you, you kind of probably get it off of the name. Uh, we can uh, move around metal objects, uh, which we're going to use quite a lot in the first part. So there we go. I set it up in such a way that I don't fall into the water, because if I were to fall into the water, I'd lose about three seconds to that. Again, cool little trick here. And this is where I needed my shield again. I hope this guy doesn't troll me too much today. Okay. 
and there we go. You're supposed to actually pick up a metal block to get to the other side, but you can also just use a shield jump like that. It's about like 10 to 15 seconds faster. And we get to the first, uh, or the end of the first of our shrines. Now, there is a little bit of an interesting thing here. So there's two parts of a cutscene in this uh, with the shrine, in between which we get the spirit orb. The second one, I'm not going to skip right away, but rather wait a little bit until that text has fully disappeared. And that's actually faster than immediately skipping the cutscene. Uh, because if I skip it a little bit later, the game immediately starts loading rather than me having to wait longer in the loading screen. We save more on the loading screen than we uh, take time to watch a cutscene. So it's both more interesting and it's faster. So we see the old man uh, come out again. And, uh, you know, we want to get that paraglider now, right? Uh... I actually took the wrong option there. That's like three extra text boxes. I'm supposed to say hand it over, please. Uh, it's uh, second, first, first, second on this uh, on this set of text boxes. Every wrong text box option only loses like a handful of seconds at most. So now he tells us to get uh, four or three more shrines before he hands over the paraglider. So I'm going to jump there before opening this uh, the map there because that actually uh, makes it so that I don't get an animation of Link looking at the Sheikah slate, which saves about four seconds roughly. So we go to the tower, and this is the second fall council and probably the the more annoying one to mess up. Messing up this one loses quite a bit more time than messing up the first one. So I hope we don't get to get to see that. I've been pretty consistent at my fall cancels lately, so so again, I'm going to just set it up. Fall off. And there we go. Didn't die. Dying there is uh, pretty bad. That loses about a minute if you die there just on loading screens. So now we're going to go to the bombs uh, shrine, which, like I said, it's either the last one or the second one that you do, depending on your route. Now I'm going to try to walk a very specific path in order to avoid a cutscene of a uh, guardian waking up. We're going to go over here. I'm gonna go between these two over here. Now I need to mo not move too far to the left. I'm going to jump up the, up the wall there, jump up there, fall down, and rush to the shrine. With that, we save the animation. That saves a little bit of time again. I don't know exactly how long the animation is. So I've only triggered it like twice in a run. So it's, it's pretty easy to avoid as long as you just keep an eye on where you're going. So this is the bomb shrine. Uh, it's also the only one where you get two runes rather than one. One for... Uh, uh, circle size or like uh, ball formed uh, bombs and one for uh, cube formed bombs. We're going to be using both of them. So we get ourselves the runes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to immediately get ourselves a bomb and throw it at those breakable blocks over there. Now it takes too long for the bomb to load, so I'm going to just switch the kind of bomb and throw that. Now if I'm fast enough here, I can actually make this cycle. No, I was too slow. Uh, I would have made it if, I, if my stamina meter hadn't run out. Oh, this is... This this sucks. So yeah, uh, if you are too close, you will die in the process there. So I didn't want to risk that. I'd rather wait an extra cycle there. Now, there, normally we're supposed to catapult a bomb into these blocks over here. But we can also just do that. Did I... I did not hit the first one. Okay. There we go. Pretty bad bomb shrine, honestly, but whatever. I've seen worse. I didn't die. That's something. 
Uh, please, thank you. So yeah, that's two shrines done, two more to go. And uh, we're actually coming up on the hardest part of uh, the plateau run. Or at least one of the hardest parts. Uh, you see, um, there is a thing called temperature. And freezing is very much a thing. And I don't have any protection against freezing. I could get that, but it's really, really slow. So we're not going to do that. But rather, I'm just going to try and go through that without freezing to death. We'll see if we succeeded. In practice, I died once. So we'll, we'll see if we succeed or not. Uh, going to the Shrine of Resurrection. I'm going to move from the Shrine all the way to uh, the last two uh, Shrines that we need to complete. So yeah, just, just a couple loading screens here. Uh, one thing I should actually mention is there is actually a, a little bit of a, a thing here as well, because uh, if you were to play the Wii U version of this game, you'd actually save about 27 seconds across uh, the run just on things like that, because the Wii U is it loads faster than the, than the Switch does. So I'm actually playing the unoptimal version of the game, but, uh, you know, that's just what it is. I'm going to pick up a few more mushrooms over here. Again, they're just safety items. And we're going to whistle sprint up this uh, this slope here. You see, whistle sprinting has a, a secondary thing where it's actually possible to sprint up certain slopes that you're not supposed to sprint on. We're supposed to be climbing, and that reduces stamina, and it's slow and annoying, and we don't do that. Now, earlier, what I did was a shield surf to get my jump further. Uh, we're actually going to do a little bit of sh actual shield surfing here, because shield surfing in and of itself is pretty fast as well. going to line myself up right about here. Sprint, and there we go. We're also now in, in really cold weather, and cold weather is uh, kind of annoying for us, mostly. Can I get out of here, please? This is not good. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to make a safety save here, because this is probably the place that I die the most. Because uh, we're going to do a shield jump, or a jump into a shield in order to just skip that without having to uh, use Magnesis there. I actually got it first try, so that's kind of cool. And we're again, sh uh, s whistle sprint up this ledge. Uh, we're almost dying, but that's not that big a deal. We don't care yet. Okay, now I need to worry about this. Okay, that should just about do it. And, oh, crap. Right, okay, that just happened. <sighs> That's not quite how that was supposed to go. That, I, I actually got the hard part and then died on the easy part. I wanted to get a little bit more stamina so I could make it up the ledge there more easily. Um, which I then miserably failed at. Luckily, down there on the mountain, there's a checkpoint. So even though I died, I didn't... I don't have to redo the hard part, at least. Also, we're back at full health, which might save me my heal items. Which might actually help me save pretty much that entire time back again. A little bit low. Should be able to whistle sprint starting here. Okay, not ideal because my uh, stamina run out, but at least we got up. We jump up there because it's actually faster th even than uh, sprinting. It's because of the way that snow works in this game. Snow is annoying pretty much, at least most of the time. And we get to the next shrine. So this could have gone a lot worse. Still not quite the way I wanted it to, but it could have been a lot worse. Which gets me through to the third shrine. This is Cryonis. Uh, it lets me make these cool little ice blocks. Uh, you might have noticed I am on half a heart, which is a little bit lower than I'd like to be. But uh, 
realistically, we shouldn't die. And if I do get hit and I'm in a dangerous position, I can opt to go for a heal item to ensure that I don't end up dying at any point. So I'm going to spawn the block, and I'm going to try to be on it as it spawns. And we're going to rise into the thing there. So there is a, a Guardian here. Every hit he does deals a quarter heart worth of damage. Didn't get hit, so that finishes off Cryonis. That's uh, th three shrines done, one more to go, and then it's on to uh, getting ourselves that paraglider. And there we go. So the last shrine we have left is Stasis, and Stasis is probably uh, one of the most used abilities in the speedrun in general, because we use it a lot for stuff like launches. We're actually going to be doing one launch in this run, so you can get a bit of an idea of what launching exactly is. So again, we're going to shield surf. Uh, there is, we're kind of running on a timer here. Uh, if we manage to get the next shrine complete before about 8.30 in game, in the in game time, on the uh, like the in-game clock, pretty much, uh, it actually makes the launch a little bit easier because I don't have to worry about Stalfos is running around trying to kill me. So we actually want to try and kind of be fast on this to make sure that it isn't nighttime by the time I get there. Uh, so again, we're gonna try to not die. There is actually a checkpoint uh, on the way. Dying isn't that bad as long as we've passed the checkpoint. So we're gonna go up here. And there we go. This should allow me to shield surf. So the checkpoint is right around here somewhere. So we've passed the checkpoint, which means at this point it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to die. I am going to use the herb to try and avoid dying altogether, of course. Uh, but for that, we're going to do one more fall cancel. Okay, that's fine. I don't need the axe anymore. Uh, not entirely how I'm supposed to fall cancel, but like I said, I don't need the axe anymore. We didn't die, so... On to the last of the shrines, and this is Magnesis. Now, as soon as we get the ability, I'm going to try, or uh, stasis, and we're immediately, as, as soon as I get the ability, I'm going to try and stasis a cogwheel. You cannot ever be too early on this. It's always, uh, you're out either late or you got it. And that's that cogwheel right there uh, in order to attempt to make it across the gap right away. We'll see if we succeed at it. So right there, and freeze. Okay, we made it just in time. There we go. When will I do 100%? Uh, soon TM. Probably not, but I am planning to learn 100% at some point. That is like my end goal with this game. So I'm going to get the sledgehammer here. I could shield jump across this gap, but it's not that much faster, and this is pretty easy to do. Like, it doesn't say... It's probably the shield jump that saves the least amount of time, so we're just going to avoid that to prevent not falling to my death there. I think that shield jump saves, like, approximately five seconds or something. 
which at this stage is not really worth it yet. Which also means we're coming up on the end of the run, uh, but before the end of the run, we're going to get about seven minutes worth of cutscenes because you guys donated for that, so uh, we're going to see that very soon. Uh, as we get out of the shrine, we're going to meet up with the, uh, the old man here, and he tells us to meet him at the place where the four Whoa. shrines intersect. Now, unfortunately for us, that's quite far away, so we need a, a way to properly get there, and I know exactly how we're going to do that. However, I will say I have I have died a few times in doing this. I'm not 100% consistent at, at these launches because it's pretty difficult. Uh, but we shouldn't die, hopefully. So we're going to go. We're, it's, not, it's 7.40, which is actually a really convenient time for us. Uh, going to get this bomb out and place it right there. In the, I'm going to try to kick it in the gap here like that. Going to stasis. Face away from it, stasis, hit this as much as I can. Explode the bomb. And I'm just going to hang on to this rock like this. Whee! And there we go. That's it. Now we're basically at the... Uh, oh, there's a checkpoint there. Now we're basically at the, the Temple of Time. That's how we uh, save a whole lot of time. I didn't get the most convenient place in terms of landing, but good enough. So we whistle sprint to the stairs. I'm going to keep whistle sprinting just so that I can climb these stairs quicker. Three of those. Wait for it to reload. Two more. And that worked out. So time for those cutscenes. Time will be almost immediately after the last cutscene. There's a few text boxes and that's it. So this is where we get to see the story of the game. This is what you guys donated for. We get to finally see who the old man is. And, uh, well, enjoy. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. Yeah, no, this is, uh, this is the hard part, absolutely. I was the last leader of Hyrule. A kingdom which no longer exists. <sighs> so yeah, we, we get to see that the old man was King Roam, uh, the last the king of Hyrule. was merciless. It devastated everything in its path, lo, a century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. Yeah, it's the basically three cutscenes here. Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the divine beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. Yeah, the idea with all dungeons this is that we would actually do all of the Divine Beasts, which, like I said, I'm, I'm intending to learn that and showcase that BSG 25 uh, in we September or something. Princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. 
One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power, and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule, and tasked them with the duty of piloting the Divine Beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. from deep below Hyrule Castle, seize control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, and turn them against us. The Champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight, gravely wounded, collapsed while defending the princess. And thus, the Kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter, my dear Zelda and the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That knight was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. Which is exactly what I we do in any percent, by the way. That you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. There you will find the Elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Shika slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. Get ready on time, because that was the last cutscene. Mm. And time. So yeah, that is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Any percent great plateau. Uh, with that, we have the paraglider and are now allowed to leave. Uh, like I said, you can move on here to any percent, but I am not consistent enough at both Hyrule Castle and the Blights and at even getting there to realistically be able to do that. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, Breath of the Wild. I hope to be able to showcase a little bit more of this game uh, in a future BSG still, but hey, you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, with that, I think we're going to move on to the afterthoughts. So uh, yeah, we'll be right back with you guys. And uh, yeah, just uh, 
got some final final words, I guess, uh, in the end. Oh, thank you, Cool, for that amazing Breath of the Wild run. I'm really interested 